Hey everyone, so I saw a bunch of you today for extra help and a lot of you are working within your 3D models and I just thought I would go over some um, quick tips to getting your views out of Rhino. Um, so this is Lana's model and I asked her to share it with me because we had gone through a few things in her model that I thought could be helpful to all of you. So she has saved a view that she's gonna use as her perspective and she has some scale figures in here, which is great. But as we were looking at her view, we realized um, she doesn't have any um, background trees placed and that's going to make it a little bit difficult to kind of really get the understanding of the site. So I'm gonna go over an easy way to bring in some tree silhouettes and place those in the background. But I also wanted to just showcase how you can turn on your environment and skylight because it was tucked away in one of the videos, I think from week four or five, and um, I thought it was worth a reminder. So right now, uh, this is in the rendered display mode, and it's just showing basically what the materials of each plane is. Um, and we see there's a bit of shading on the ground here, but it's just kind of very fuzzy, nondescript shading, almost like a overcast kind of day. Um, so if we go to our basic lighting scenario, this will turn everything white and um, that's getting a little bit closer to like kind of like a really basic white clay render, but you're still seeing not very much detail in the shading. So what some of you have missed is the uh, rendering options that you have to change. If you don't see this rendering panel within your um, sidebar here, just right click on your gear wheel and make sure that rendering is checked on. So under the rendering panel, um, just double check a few things. First, I usually like to give my background a gradient so that it looks a little bit more like a sky. And I just kind of choose for the base, a sort of yellowy color and then for the top, uh, something like a light blue, something like that. So that will give any background just sort of like a, a warm sky gradient tone like that. And that way you can really easily tell what's the sky in your perspective view. Okay, the other thing is a lot of you had um, this custom environment for reflections turned on and you don't need that. You can check that off and make sure it's not checked. Turn on the ground plane. That's going to make sure that anything that is not on top of a 3D modeled plane still casts a shadow on the ground. And then we're gonna go down to this lighting scenario. So um, what I saw in a lot of people's models is that the sun was turned on, but it was set to a time when the sun wouldn't be shining. So for example, you might've had it set to uh, the nighttime, you might've had it set to a different location. So you wanna be sure in your uh, sun options that you're in Vancouver and you can just search for it here in the search bar and it should come up. And then also make sure that you're at a time of day and a month that is in accordance with what you would like to show in your view. So don't be showing December shadows if your view is meant to be in the springtime. Actually be specific about the time of year and the time of day that you're going for. So I'm gonna set it to something in late August, maybe later in the afternoon around here. And now you can see that those uh, sun shadows are being cast across the site, um, how we would expect them to show up. But you're also gonna to need to turn on the skylight. And a lot of you had the skylight set to studio. You need to make sure that this is set to a sky because if it's a studio light, it's gonna be like a studio, like a photography studio lighting. So very harsh, not environmental. So we need to go to this drop down box. And if you um, don't have a Rhino sky here, you're gonna to go to use a new environment and import from environment library. And it will open up this folder and you can just go ahead and select the Rhino sky here. And um, I already had it in here, so I'm just going to uh, add it again just to show you. And now you see that the shadows take on a more blue tone because it's, it's giving you an environmental lighting that's mimicking the tone of the sky. And now, so instead of just having this uh, dark um, yellow shadows from the sun, you also have the mitigating factor of this skylight. So this is how you can get really specific shade on your site. 
So um, just to make sure that all of those options are changed. And now if you're not seeing shading for any reason, it could be, um, there's a few reasons. It could be that your model is far from the origin. So if your model is really far, like if your model is really far from the origin, like somewhere up here, you might not be able to see the light. So if your shadows aren't showing up, you might have to move your model closer to the center of the Rhino file. If you can't do that, then it's not a big deal. You'll still get the shadows, but you have to preview them in ray traced view. And this might take up some memory on your computer. So you're going to have to um, make a decision if that's something you want to show. And just a note that it will reflect whatever materials you have applied to your surfaces. So Lana has colors applied to her layers here in the materials palette. Um, and so uh, when you go to ray traced, it's going to show you the materiality that you have assigned. If you haven't assigned anything in these material um, area, then everything is going to show up as white. So let's just go back to basic lighting, which is here. I have a few tips about setting your perspective. So Lana has her set here. Um, and I'm going to just make sure that I have a scale object as a reference. I'm going to bring this guy, let's duplicate him here. I want to make sure that our perspective is actually at the eye level. So right now we're kind of floating above looking down and make sure you use your scale figures effectively to sort of help you locate your uh, perspective views. We always want to make sure that our scale figures heads are on the horizon. So if we're floating above, that's no longer an eye level view. So let's just um, use our scale figures effectively to sort of help us and just maneuver the camera angle so that we're, we're at the right eye level view. So this is a little bit better. Um, I'm just going to final, finalize this a tiny bit more just by using my, um, my zoom. And now I can turn this scale figure off and I know that I'm at eye level and that actually helps open up the uh, negative space underneath this pipe a little bit more. So I'm gonna save this. Okay, and now um, we can return to that view when we want. So this is the previous view. This is the revised view. It's just a little bit lower down, but it's at eye level. So we know that everything is uh, set properly. Another thing you should check as you're setting views in Rhino is under the um, properties, you, without anything selected, you wanna just double check what your lens length is. So right now this is on 50, which is not a very wide angle. That's a kind of a zoomed in angle. A normal camera width would be somewhere between 24 or 28 millimeters. So let's go to 28 and see what that gets us. You see now we have a much wider frame of view. So we might need to zoom in again and to get back to that view that we had before. So um, keep in mind that how wide your lens length is, is going to determine uh, what you see in your view. If you were doing an ultra wide angle view, maybe something like 18, you would have even greater um, angle of view in your perspective. So you'd be able to capture more of the site in that view. I'm gonna just set it back to 28 and take my view back again, get it so that the heads are on the horizon. I'll bring back my scale figure here and use that to help me determine. So use your lens length to help you uh, orient your view. And then another thing that you can do is set this to two point perspective. This is going to correct the verticals within the view. So you see now that all of these uprights of the swings are vertical. Whereas if we just set this back to perspective, um, it doesn't really show much in this view, but you can see if we were to raise up, the verticals are not vertical. They're actually like kind of converging into the third point, which is the Z point. Um, so when we do perspectives, we always want our verticals to be vertical. So we set this to two point perspective and that corrects the angle. So those are a few tips for working with cameras in Rhino. Looks like this guy wasn't actually on the ground. So I'm gonna set him down here.
So once you're um, happy with your view, just remember to save it so that you can return to it later. And you can do that in the named views panel. Again, if the named views panel isn't showing up, just right click on your gear wheel and make sure named views is checked off there. So I'm gonna save this one over of that one. And this was the original view and this is the corrected view. Once you set your view, there's a few ways that you can render this out. You can go to the rendering panel here and you can uh, just hit the render button and that's going to render the viewport as it has, um, uh, according to the materials that have been assigned to it. Um, again, if you don't want materials to show up or you've assigned colors to your materials that you uh, aren't working for you, then make sure that you override that with just a plain white material or just remove the materials from those layers. Um, but you can apply materials if you want. So after this is done rendering, you can save this out as uh, a file. You can also go view capture to file and um, you can choose the viewport that you want to save. I'm gonna save it here because this is the right view that I have and you can change the resolution of the image according to the image that size that you need to create. So if you need to put in a custom one, you can do that. Um, or if you wanna use one of the preset scenarios, you can choose one of those. And when you do that, you'll have the option to save it as a JPEG or a PNG. If you save it as a PNG, the sky will be transparent. So you'll be able to replace the sky with one of your own choosing. If you save it as a JPEG, the sky will stay there as this blue gradient. So it's up to you how you set that out.